there. Welcome to another episode of our Facebook Live series. I hope you're having a really great, wonderful day. And gosh, love it when I got to the office today because I just thought the sunrise was so smoking beautiful. So I just had to say that. And today what I really wanted to talk about was something that I think I talk a lot about, but I like to say it in different ways because hopefully when it comes out, it resonates with you or someone else who just needs to hear what it is to say. So oftentimes I ask myself, or I used to ask myself, what exactly do we do here? And it took me a long time till I feel like I can say it in like two sentences. And basically what it is that I love to do I'm probably gonna exceed my two sentences, is that work with like an amazing group of people who I get to work with, help people find energy in their body, um, acceptance of themselves, and just kind of get them on their way. So how do we do that? All right, and this is the, I speak a lot in metaphors, so this is the metaphor that I'm going to speak through today. So a lot of times when patients come in for their new uh, patient visit, I'll talk to, about their body as a robot, but today I'm gonna to talk about our body like a car and you as the person within are the driver. So you don't get to choose if you're a Jeep or a Ferrari or a, uh, I was gonna say a car from somewhere when I was in high school, so that's like outdated, I don't think they even make that anymore. Um, or um, like a Camry or a RAV4, you don't get to choose what your body is, but you just get to be the driver. So you, kinda, you have to accept the car that you're in because if you always wish that you were a Corvette, and you're driving a Jeep, you never get to enjoy being a Jeep. So first step is just to know you got to rock what you're born in. And the other thing is that body's been evolving for a super, that car has been evolving for a super long time um, to be really good car and that it can regenerate itself and its job is just to carry that person within from the day they're created till the day they die and that's, and it's always trying to drive you down towards the highway, towards some better place. Now for the first maybe a quarter or third of life, um, your body, you're born with a tank of gas in your car, okay, and that's you. And it's so beautiful that your body with that free tank of gas gave you energy to make countless mistakes and not really have to know anything about the car that you're driving other than you just get in the car and go. Now along the way until that first tank of gas is out, you're kind of crashing, you're worried, you're questioning lots of things. Um, and that's kind of what our, you know, when we're little and then we're in our teens and our early 20s, we're just kind of trying to figure out our way. But we always have that youth factor that is in that energy formulation of our body. So we kind of learn to kind of cheat the rule book of our car, if you will. But really, the rule book of the car has never changed. The car always needs energy and it front loads it for you. So on the back end, it requires you as the driver just to be a better driver. And to be a better driver, you have to accept the vehicle that you're in, you have to understand, and you have to listen to it. And that's kind of, I just think what life is about. It's about learning how to be the best driver in the car that you're given on the path of life. Because we're never really at any destination, we're always evolving into hopeful, better versions of ourselves. And the rule of energy of the body never changes, but the balance and how we adapt to find that is changing every step of life. So as you're driving along, you know, sometimes I think the other thing as a driver is that when you're driving the car, the car doesn't say my air filter is out, my oil is having a problem, or I got water in the gasoline or my tech, you know, engine, it's just check engine light. That's what comes on. So the check engine light, I feel like when I'm a human driver of my car, says I can't remember and concentrate, my sleep is off, and I just like run out of gas at like two in the afternoon and I still apparently have to drive from two to eight or 10 at night and that makes me irritated because I'm in behind the wheel of this car that's like not going very fast, I'm trying to turn it to the left or turn it to the right and it's not doing anything of what I want it to do and I do that day in and day out over and over again and I'm just mad now and I'm sad that it, I can't figure out how to work it. And that is I think what we see people for all the time. Like I don't understand what's going on in my body and it's just kind of undrivable. So the check engine light comes on, but you've got to know that underneath it could be a myriad of different things. Um, but the cool thing about our body is you give it energy and it fixes so many more things about itself. It doesn't ask you to know absolutely everything. It just wants you to give it a little something and it takes it and it goes the rest of the way. So, but the check engine light can be because my thyroid is off, my glucose is off, my hormones are off, my stomach is off, except my relationship with someone is off, 
all of those things, it feels absolutely exactly the same, although there are some nuances of each one. For example, if my check engine light comes on and my lateral eyebrows are falling out, well, maybe it's my thyroid. But the fact that I can't remember and concentrate, I'm gaining weight, my sleep is a bummer, is my check engine light. The lateral eyebrows falling out gives me the cue that maybe this light has to do with my thyroid. Now, if I'm feeling like I'm in a Snickers bar commercial where I'm hungry and I'm shaky and then I have to eat something and then that makes it go away and that happens all the time, that's actually because my glucose is up. So I still can't remember and concentrate. My sleep is off. My, my body fat's going up. Um, but it's because my glucose is going up. So as soon as I start to figure out what association each individual reason is with, then I can start to hone in as the driver. So once people can start to figure out, hey, my lateral eyebrows fall out, my thyroid is off, my check engine light came on. When they come in, they'll say, hey, my check engine light came on and my, my lateral eyebrows fell out. And I'm like, it's your thyroid. Yeah, let's check it out. And it's so much faster to run the diagnostic because you can hear what your body's telling you. Because whenever the car is having a hard time driving and you don't understand as the driver, you'll get irritated. But getting irritated doesn't, don't get wrapped up in the fact that you're irritated. Just fix the car and it's drivable and the irritation goes away. So by saying that, I'm just trying to help people understand a lot of times emotionally, we are reacting to the state of the car. Fix the car, the emotional state oftentimes resolves. And I'll hear people come in and they'll be really focused on their thyroid or really focused on their glucose or really focused on this. And I'm like, totally yes, but really, it's about the whole car. It's not just about the air filter. It's just not about the gasoline in your car. It's just not about the type of tires that you're driving on. It's an all together. So when you think about your car that way, every time you make one difference in the way that your body moves, you affect all the other parts of your car too. So it seems, I think, slightly abstract for people when they come in and I'll tell them, adjust your glucose, adjust your thyroid, adjust your hormones. Anytime you do any of that, you're going to feel better. The reason that you'll feel better is because you get more control over your drive. And so you know it's not about, you can't just worry about one thing and you have to be mindful of all things, but every time you adjust something, you feel better. And that is really cool. The other thing too, sometimes that I'll draw an analogy about like premenstrual dysphoric disorder or a PMS because our periods, people will wonder, well, I have my check engine light comes on right before blood comes out of my vagina and I've got, I feel achy and I'm irritated and I can't sleep. Well, think about it. Your body loves blood. Blood is important, gives you oxygen and every month in a woman's reproductive life for the sake of the potential of procreation, our body actually pokes a hole in this gas tank and you're driving down the highway. If you are an energy efficient unit and you poke a hole in your gas tank and you're oozing gas out on the car, it makes you kind of irritate it until it seals up. So that is how sometimes when you can help people's periods go away or you help them with a the menstrual function, they get less irritable because they're not losing blood and those chemicals aren't being released. And that's a very different way of thinking about the human body, I feel, than, than me getting all technical about the lining of your uterus and your hormones and the cytokines and the in, pro-inflammatory kind of changes that happen in your body. It's literally to your body oozing energy for the site of procreation. So if you can just change that, you notice a substantial difference. Now, so, so really, um, and, and, and as you age, it's this beautiful thing that aging um, just takes energy from your body but it doesn't mean you can't be mindful and if, um, in your body as a driver and become more mindful of where you're giving energy to and um, what's taking it from you. Because it becomes more important as a driver of your car as you age that you understand this principle. Because I talk to people all the time about what's balance of energy. Balance of energy is your equilibrium. It's how much energy do I give the world? How much energy does the world give me? and how much energy does my body biologically give me? And if at the end of that math equation, it's plus, there's a surplus, and your body lets you drive. If at the end of that math equation, it's negative, your body drives you. So we all really want it to be positive. But when you look at that math equation, two thirds of the math equation is your driving, is you. 
And that is so powerful. And it's awesome to know because you just realize how powerful you are as a person. So if you feel like you're driving a car and you don't understand the rule book, ask it the question and it will tell you the answer and fix the problem and you get to drive again. And that's really what everybody wants. So, but, and, and a lot of the times I'll start with people's biology because biology is a math problem. There's no emotion in biology. When you think about emotion, you lose a lot of energy in um, your relationships with people, how you feel about yourself. But if your back rear tire just needs five pounds of air, that's smoking easy. So put air in the tire and then go try to figure out the other stuff because this stuff is hard. This stuff is so much easier. But you also have to be willing to become a better driver at the same time to reach your ultimate destination. And life is just this big highway and we're all on it together and sometimes you're driving next to someone and connected to somebody and sometimes you're on this big open road all by yourself with nature and it's literally just life you're in your car you're driving along you're trying to figure out your rule book you're trying to find out your connection points because your make and your model is always going to be a little different than the one next to you and you're different in that you're individuals but you're the same in that you're driving in a car so I just think this car analogy is really an easy way to kind of understand our body because, and then the other thing I would say is that sometimes we spend more energy taking care of our cars than we do our own body. And your body loves you from the day you're created till the day you die. So we should do better about loving our bodies. And if you feel like you, your body's controlling you, it would never do that because it doesn't like you. It does it because it loves you and it's trying to protect you from something. And that's just a kind of cool thought. So anyway, just learn to be a better driver. And just, if you don't understand what your body's saying, ask it the question that will tell you the answer. And literally, it gives you the energy back to drive and that makes you feel peaceful. And that's all I wanted to say again about today is just um, life's journey. You just figure out the rule book of your body. The more you understand it, the easier the drive. So I hope you have a great day. And um, I can't wait for Friday because I have this really fun idea about a planner's peanut. But you'll have to tune in to see what I'm going to say. Because it's funny, I think. But you're talking to a girl that spent like over two-thirds of her life in the vagina. <laughs> okay, all right. Have a great day.